Carboxylic acids and esters can be reduced to form alcohols. This is very similar to the reduction of aldehydes and ketones. This is an example of a carboxylic acid. A carboxylic acid has a carbon-oxygen double bond, and on one side of the carbon-oxygen double bond, we have an OH group. When a carboxylic acid is reduced, the carbon of the carbon-oxygen double bond is retained, and the functional group attached to that is converted to a simple alcohol, OH group. This is an example of an ester. The ester functional group is very similar to the carboxylic acid group. We have a carbon-oxygen double bond, and on one side we have, instead of an OH group, we have an OR group, where R is being used to represent some sort of carbon chain. So for example here, I have an OCH3 group. This could be an OCH2CH3 group. It could be a much longer carbon chain. When an ester is reduced, we end up with the exact same product. So we have our carbon of the carbon-oxygen double bond, and what is now attached is just a simple alcohol. This particular reduction process is a bit more difficult than the reduction of an aldehyde or a ketone. For the reduction of an aldehyde or a ketone, we have many different reagents that we could use to do the reduction. We have H2 gas in one of our metal catalysts. We have lithium aluminum hydride, and we also have sodium borohydride. For the reduction of a carboxylic acid or an ester, our only option is to use the lithium aluminum hydride reagent, step one followed by water, step two. So this is the only reducing agent that is powerful enough or strong enough to um, allow for this sort of transformation. The mechanism for the reduction of a carboxylic acid or an ester is pretty similar to the mechanism of the reduction of an aldehyde or a ketone. It is a little bit different because um, we have a little bit more conversion to do. And I'm gonna draw the mechanism for this reaction to give you an idea of what it looks like starts out the same way in terms of using the hydride ion. Remember LAH is a source of the hydride ion, which is the actual reactive species here. The hydride ion attacks the carbon of the carbon-oxygen double bond, and it causes that carbon-oxygen double bond to open up. That adds the hydride ion to the carbon of the carbon-oxygen double bond, and it puts a negative formal charge on the oxygen atom because it now has an extra set of electrons. Now, this is where the mechanism differs from the reduction of a ketone or an aldehyde. Instead of just simply protonating, which is what we would do if we had an aldehyde or a ketone, we see that the carbon-oxygen double bond actually returns. So the electrons that were moved up in the first step, they come back down and reform that carbon-oxygen double bond. And in order to make room for that carbon-oxygen double bond, the molecule actually kicks out the OR group, it just leaves. So this leaves us with an aldehyde. I've just taken this hydrogen and shifted it over to the side just so the molecule is a little bit more symmetrical. We do have this OCH3 group that was removed from the molecule hanging out. It's just gone now. Um, it's, not, it's not an important factor in the rest of this reaction. So I'm not gonna continue writing it. Um, once the aldehyde is formed, as you know, aldehydes are also very reactive towards hydride reagents. So another H minus ion will come in and it will attack that carbon one more time and repeat the process of opening up that carbon oxygen double bond. So now we have two hydrogens that have been added to that carbon. We have a carbon oxygen single bond and once again, a negative formal charge up on the oxygen atom due to that extra lone pair of electrons. At this point, there isn't anything else that the molecule can do other than just proceed with protonation. So this is where we bring in the water in the step two of these reagents. The water molecule adds, um, is used as a source of H plus to put a hydrogen on that oxygen with the negative formal charge. And here is the alcohol that is formed. And again, it does look kind of funny um, for me to have these hydrogens written in place in a line structure like this, but I'm gonna leave them there so that you can see um, where all the hydrogens were added as we moved through this reaction.